Hi, I'm Emily, and in this tutorial, we are going to look at creating a cluster of cells dividing using metaballs in Maya. Now, metaballs are something people using Cinema 4D are used to using, as there's actually a tool called that. In Maya, we can still achieve this effect using the cluster deformer and n particles. Here, I've just done a very, very rough render of a scene, so you can get an idea of the look we're trying to achieve with this tutorial. Now, let's start out in a blank scene in Maya. The first thing I want to show you is creating this custom tool here, which actually centers whatever you have in your scene to the world center. And it's just something that we need to set up quickly in our shell. It's going to make this tutorial much quicker than if you were doing it by hand and aligning everything by hand. So you can see that just by clicking that tool, this cube goes to the world center. In order to create this, we need to go up to our shelf settings and click shelf editor. You'll see here is the button that we need to create a new button. I've already done it here and I've called mine Center World. And if you go over to the command option and then you need to type in this code. I'll put this code down in the description below just so that you've got it easily there. And once you've done that, you can just close this and your new button will be up on your shelf. So now that that's done, let's start off in the FX menu. And we want to go to N particles and the N particle tool. And on our grid, we want to create eight N particles. And then click enter. Now, if you right click and then select particle, and then we're going to go to the modeling menu and select one of our particles and go to deform and cluster. And this has added a cluster handle to that particle. Now we want to go around each of our particles and do the same. But instead of going back to the deform menu, you can just hit G on your keyboard and it will just repeat the last action. Now I've just hidden the nucleus because it's just getting a bit in the way. And now if we select N particle and go up to modify and convert, then we want to do N particle to polygons. And don't worry, right now it looks like your particles have just disappeared. But what we want to do is go to the attribute editor then find N particle shape one deformed and then open output mesh. By increasing the blobby radius, you can see that the mesh is now forming on your scene. You can play around with these settings until you get the desired effect. And change your triangle size to give your shapes more of a spherical feel. Now, if we click on one of these cluster handles, you can see that we're actually able to move this. And the effect is kind of like cell division, I guess, with, with each sphere splitting from the other one. Now for the tool that we set up earlier, if you select all of your cluster handles and then click your tool and then magically they're all aligned in the world center. Now what we want to do is select two of the handles at a time and then group them together by clicking Control G. So I'm grouping one and two together, three and four together, five and six together, and seven and eight together. I guess this is one of the main parts of the tutorial because it's all about the organization of how you split these to make it look like it is one cell that's split into eight separate cells. So if we select two of our groups, group one and group two, and then add a keyframe, I'm using keyboard shortcut S to set my keyframes, and then separate them both and key them apart. Oh, and don't forget to turn off your gravity by going back into your nucleus and setting the gravity to zero. Now, when these two cells are separating, sometimes it looks like the scale of them is going down a little bit. So you can alter this by setting some keyframes in the blobby radius scale. So every time that it's dividing, tweaking the scale so that it looks like it's maintaining its original size. 
Playing around with the blobby radius takes a lot of tweaking. I've just done it very quickly for the sake of this tutorial, so my final outcome isn't fantastic, but you get the idea of how you can do it in your own scene. And now what I'm doing is I'm separating group 1 from group 2, and then I'm going to separate group 3 from group 4 as well. And you want to stagger the separations a little bit because they wouldn't all be splitting at the exact same time. Mine's probably a little bit too close together right now. I'm also going to change the blobby radius scale a little bit as well as I go along and then go back and check that I've not got any overlap on my cells. Then the next thing we want to do is actually open up our groups. So opening up group 1 and moving the cluster handle 1 away from cluster handle 2 and then going through each of these groups and doing the same thing. So I'm just going to speed this up for a little bit just because you'll probably get bored if I play this in real time. You can see here that you need to take time with the blobby radius scale. I've just done it very quickly, so my cells kind of look like they're growing a bit unnaturally. But when you sit down to do this yourself, you can really spend more time on it. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you have a different method for doing this, I'd be really interested to hear about it. This has just been a bit of trial and error trying to work out how to do this for myself. Um, so if you have any further suggestions, they're more than welcome. And if you like this tutorial, then please subscribe to my channel because I'm hoping to make a lot more. I've had a bit of a break and I'm back on it now. So I'm very excited to share my new ideas with new subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. Please go and check out my other videos, check out my website and other social media stuff. You can pretty much find me on everything. You can normally find me under the name Emily McDougall. Um, I've recently changed my name, but all my art and everything is remaining under my maiden name. So anyway, have fun, and I hope to see some examples from you after using this tutorial.